To order, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bruceen. Here. Alderman Berenger, Vice Chairman Williamson. Here. Alderman Moore, Alderman French. Present. Alderman Vaccaro. Present. Alderman Carter. Chairman Kennedy. Here. By present, we have a quorum. Okay, we have several bills before us. We'll first take up Board Bill 124, uh, sponsored by Alderman Cruson. I understand you also have a, an amendment for the bill? Yes. Is that all for this one? Mr. Chairman, would you like for me to put the amendment before you? Or I really can't do that, right? First, or just go ahead and talk about the bill? Talk, talk about the bill, then we'll talk move. Talk about the bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Board Bill 124 is a bill to transfer the lease that we have with uh, American Golf, now called Eagle Golf, to the new entity that acquired that company, which is CLP um, Leasehold. The original lease that we did back, I don't know, Gary, what year was it? 1987. 1997. 1987. 1987. Okay. Uh, requires that any time there is a transfer uh, in the entity that it come back to the Board of Aldermen. So this is a pretty perfunctory thing, I do believe, okay. um, to, to transfer this to the entity that acquired the entity that is uh, now has the lease. Okay. Are there questions from members of the committee? Alderman, Alderman Williamson, pardon me. Mm -hmm. you just so, in other words, I, I guess you pretty much explained it. Um, it's a different uh, company that's taking over uh, from the old Eagle Company, and I guess the like CLP is. Jeff, am I saying this correctly? Yeah. This is Jeff Raffleson from uh, Eagle Golf. The, he's the general manager. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm correctly saying. Yeah, that. the original lease was with American Golf Corporation in 19. It, it, that changed, it, this transpired once before to a company called CNL and Eagle Golf. The owner of Eagle Golf is actually a past president of American Golf, and they bought that. And now this is transferred again to a company called Argus LLP, and it's the same local management, um, and it's Eagle Golf stays in place. Kind of a buyout, I guess. Yes. More or less. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, does that complete your questions? Alderman? Yes, sir. Okay. Alderman French, any questions? Yeah, so what, what, what land is this? Where is this? This is the golf course the in Forest course. Park. Well, there are two different sites, but it's the golf course that's at Lagoon Drive on the west side of the park. Three nine-hole courses there where the Probstein Golf Clubhouse is and the... Uh, so this includes the... The house too is not not just the, the course, but like. You mean the golf clubhouse? Clubhouse. Yeah, right. It, that's all run by the same entity. And they've been running it since '87. They have. Okay. That's it. Okay. Alderman Vicaro. No question. No question. You want to take up the amendment at this point? Right. I would offer an amendment, which is before you, which essentially just says that. Um, the city would be uh, have to approve any change in the management uh, company of the golf course before it took a place took place, and ideally that would have been in the original language of the bill. But this is an amendment to add that. Okay. Any questions on the amendment? If not, we can entertain a motion for the amendment. Been moved and seconded that we adopt amendment number one to board bill 124. Any discussion on the motion? If not, Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll? McCruson. Aye. Alderman Berenger, Vice Chairman Williamson. Aye. Alderman Moore, Alderman French. Aye. Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Carter, Chairman Kennedy. Aye. Five aye votes. Amendment one comes out with due pass rate. Okay, by your vote, we have passed amendment number one. That's all the amendments, it's just that one. Right. Okay, then we take a Motion for the adoption of Board Bill 124 is amended. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. Been moved and seconded that we adopt uh, Board Bill 124 as amended. Any questions on the motion? Been a request for previous roll. 
Any opposition to previous role? Seeing none by your vote, we have adopted uh, committee substitute for board bill 124. Yes, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now take up board bill 161, going to be taken care of by Alderman Vaccaro. Deanna had asked me to do this last week, although I haven't talked to her this week, I assume that must still carry over. Mm -hmm. um, Board Bill um, 161 mm -hmm. is, is a uh, proposed agreement to ensure the SID will go forward. The money from the SID will go into the TIF and go the length of the TIF. Since I'm not that familiar, we're bringing up friends. Okay. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, I'm Bill Keeling with Posanelli representing Green Street Properties. Uh, what this is is hopefully the final bill relating to a TIF project that's uh, part of the really the city's efforts to revitalize the North Riverfront area, the far North Riverfront area. Um, the city has approved a TIF. The Board of Aldermen approved that back in 2013. And I can pass out a summary piece here that has the references to the TIF bills and explains the project a little bit. Um, the bottom line was that the city development people wanted the TIF to have a little more revenue to it, a little more oomph. So as is not uncommon, they required that there be a community improvement district created by the developer to uh, levy both a sales tax and a um, special assessment on the property within the project to have those revenues go into the special allocation fund for the TIF to make sure the TIF pays off faster and that then the property gets back on the tax rolls quicker. Um, what this agreement does, it authorizes the city to enter into an agreement with the SID and the city will be requiring the SID to remain in existence and also to turn all the money over to the special allocation fund. So basically this is a intergovernmental agreement. It's the uh, SLDC has reviewed it. Mm -hmm. I'm authorized to say on behalf of David Meyer, the attorney over at SLDC, that they have no objections to the form of this. Um, and it's to protect the city and to protect the TIF that has already been enacted. Yeah, the, both of you already spoken, so you, you signed up to speak. So, so. I did sign up to speak. Mm -hmm. We're also That's joined by Brian Pratt with Green Street Properties if there's any questions as to the agreement or the project. I did bring did pictures of. You made, make a few comments. We are under construction. Um, there's some pictures of about a month old. At this point, we have roof on the building, making great progress. Hope to have the tenant, mm -hmm. which is Central States Thermo King, moved in by February of this uh, 2015. Questions from members of the committee? Alderman Williamson. Oh, yes. Me, Alderman Cruz. Alderman Williamson. Yes, just a few. Um, and this is the last phase of the redevelopment of, of the uh, North Riverfront. It'll be the final and last phase of that redevelopment. So uh, when we approved, so this is a 36-acre site. This okay. particular building is going up on the front 18 acres, and we're out marketing the the additional 20 acres on the on the property. It, sits between the two rail lines as a part of this project we're actually building an access road between Cary and Adelaide to open up that second lot and that the concrete's being poured hopefully this week on that drive lane is uh great where was Greenway involved in this project uh not not in this case no okay not in this particular one here okay that's all I had thank you okay. Alderman French yeah I, I missed um what is the tenant? Who is the tenant you said is moving It's in? Central States Thermo King. They're currently on Shoto across from the Villa Lighting Building, constrained by the size of their building. So this is a, a relocation expansion of their okay. business. What do they do? Um, they have refrigerated units that go into trailers and uh, RVs and um, the tractor. So basically they, they, they provi provide, install, and maintain the cooling units that are in the transportation business. Okay. So it's like business to business, not really Correct. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. No questions. Uh, we have a new alder person here that I did not 
recognize in the last bill. Did you have any questions here? Okay. Well, welcome to the committee. Mm -hmm. um, with that, do you have any closing remarks? No, I really, I really don't. I would ask your favorable, uh, you know, outcome on Board Bill 161. Okay, we will. We can entertain a motion for Board Bill. Second. We have a. It's been moved and seconded that we pass our Board Bill 161. Yes, roll. It's been a request for previous roll. Any opposition to previous roll? Say no opposition. By your vote, we have passed our Board Bill 161 with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We we'll now have a review. It's our time to re do our quarterly review of the budget. We have here the budget director, Paul Payne. Uh, earlier, I had sent out a copy of his uh, budget review of the first quarter, and we do have uh, printed copies here for us today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll wait for those to get distributed out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, members of the committee. Um, the materials you have that are being circulated this morning are, uh, the first one is uh, basically a, uh, what's called the FY15 first quarter at a glance. That's a summary of the mm -hmm. outlook on the revenues and, and expenditures for, for the, through the results of the first quarter. You then have a, uh, a, a summary of year-to-date spending in the general fund, both in a, on a summary form as well as detail by department. This tells what expenditures year to date through the first quarter. And then there's an exhibit uh, related to uh, budget transfers that have been uh, submitted through the first quarter of the fiscal year. And, and uh, most of my discussion here is going to be focused on the, on the first quarter of the glance document. So if we go to that one. Um, at the end of the first quarter, uh, on the revenue side, uh, most of our larger taxes, that would be earnings, payroll, and sales taxes, had, did have positive results. Uh, slightly outpacing uh, uh, estimates. While we did have some temper, uh, we have to temper that outlook with a little bit of a uh, decline in the franchise utility taxes as well as some uh, departmental revenue receipts. Um, if I could uh, pull your attention to the, uh, just on the revenue side, this is page one of the first quarter at a glance, on the earnings tax. Earnings tax collections were up 3% in the first quarter. Now, uh, the earnings tax is composed of two uh, components. Uh, there are uh, individual tax and earnings tax receipts plus corporate receipts. Corporate receipts are mostly received in the fourth quarter of the fiscal year, so it's difficult to address any trend from that. But the withholding portion of the earnings tax on, and, and those taxes from individuals were up at 4.4 percent, which was a, which is a good increase for the first quarter. Um, uh, while corporate receipts declined. Again, that's more of a volatile uh, amount, which uh, I, I wait until later in the fiscal year to divide any trend from that. Uh, the rise of 3.4 percent of the withholding portion of the earnings tax is actually a, a, a good indicator and uh, is a positive result. Uh, based on those trends, you'd see something, if those trends continued, you'd see something earnings taxes outperforming by, by as much as $3 million. Of course, it's only the first quarter, but we'll follow that throughout the fiscal year. On the payroll tax, similarly, uh, the payroll tax were up 3.5 percent in the first quarter. That's fairly tracking the uh, withholding portion of the earnings tax. Um, the payroll tax, however, is a smaller base, so that would be more of a $400,000 excess there uh, in, in first quarter tracking. Sales tax was actually uh, performed uncharacteristically strong at 11.9 percent for the first quarter. Uh, in, in the long-term growth rate of sales tax is one of our weaker uh, taxes uh, over the 10-year growth is less than 1%. Mm. However, in recent years, since the recession, mm. we've seen a lot more volatility. In FY12, we had a very strong year, and then followed by a decline in FY13. Uh, now, a lot of this can be attributed to postseason baseball, ups and downs, and uh, some uh, particular events which occur and has some volatility there. But uh, it was a positive result in the first quarter. I would probably ex do not expect that 
to be at that same rate going forward for fiscal year. Probably going to be some, some retrenchment. But that's a good sign. And uh, both for the sales tax, both on the general fund side as well as those other tax funds that we have, special funds that are based on sales taxes, that's, that's, a, that's a good start to the fiscal year on the sales tax category. Uh, that would be in the, if, if that trend were to continue, that would be a, a surplus in the $3 million range. Now, offsetting some of those, uh, those positive results, we're in the, we can find declines in the franchise uh, tax uh, category, um, particularly with electric utility tax receipts, which were down 2.2%. They outperformed last year. And uh, revised, the revised figures for last year in the, in the fourth quarter actually fell short, which means we started the year uh, with a lower base than what uh, was the base projection. So that means uh, the growth needed to be not only uh, your base growth, plus you had to make up for that short in the fourth quarter of the previous fiscal year. And it just hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. So it is falling short by uh, just based on uh, the first quarter trend by about $2.3 million. So that sort of offsets some of our growth in the other tax categories. We've also seen a continued decline in the telecom tax receipt category. Uh, if you remember from last year, we had fallen, it had fallen about 10%. And, uh, and that was uh, quite unusual. I mean, it, we, we expect decline in the land-based uh, line uh, receipts, mm -hmm. but wireless receipts, particular, particular companies, have been also declining as well on certain, uh, from certain companies. Um, and that has continued in the first quarter. So I do expect the franchise tax, utility tax category to fall short in this fiscal year, at least based on the first quarter results. Um, other receipts in that category, natural gas, uh, represent, but that it is too early in the fiscal year to determine from natural gas receipts. Uh, typically, those are mostly received in the second, third, and fourth quarters of the fiscal year. Um, also, the tax payments from the airport and water division were uh, slightly up, and I expect them to, they are, expect them to remain within budget estimates. Hotel and restaurant tax receipts uh, showed increase of 7 8 percent respectively, and so these were positive results uh, outpacing uh, uh, budget estimates for the fiscal year. Uh, those are also, because they are a smaller base, are subject to the activities such as postseason baseball and all, which adds to uh, the results, and they, they can, so they can uh, experience some swings during the, during the year. They typically uh, go down in the first quarter of the calendar year, so which is our third quarter. License tax receipts were up 3.2 percent in the first quarter, but that's a small amount, about $86,000. However, the biggest category you'll see in the license tax receipts is the graduated business license, which has been trailing uh, in, in uh, previous years. And so, uh, again, that's, a, that's more of a third and fourth quarter uh, results-based uh, category. So uh, it would take uh, it would take a, a bit of an increase in the GBL in order to, to meet our uh, estimates for the licensed category. For departmental uh, receipts, um, there was a decline in the city court revenues, about 2.4 percent, but we anticipated that because when the budget was passed, we knew that uh, red light camera revenues were going to be escrowed, and so that was not included in the estimates. I should point out that the escrow balance currently uh, in the, uh, in the, for red light camera revenue is $1.9 million. Uh, of that amount, about $1.3 million would be city revenue, and the other $600,000 would be for collection costs. Uh, so they, uh, city court revenues overall were on a pace to meet the first quarter uh, reduced FY15 estimates. Refuse collection fees increased 8% in the quarter. If you remember last year, there was an adjustment they made because they had a reconciliation between water bills and the, and the refuse bills. Well, that's why uh, they were up, because they, last year they did that adjustment, so now this year uh, it's more of a normal uh, uh, collection cycle. So they were pretty much on track to meet budget estimates. Um, in the building division, building permit revenues nearly doubled in the first quarter of the fiscal year, and the building division rising about 750000 in the or about 50%. Building permits were up. Those uh, generally jump, jump around a bit uh, based on when major projects come online. So it's not something to where you can say, oh, well, the first quarter was X, so therefore the rest of the year is going to be Y. Um, it, it's something that you have to follow and, and identify and talk with the building and say, well, what major projects are coming up and when do you think they're going to be filing for permits? So it's not something that you can just mathematically project out for the rest of the fiscal year. But Having said that, the growth in the fiscal in the first quarter was a good one, and that puts them on a track to uh, meet or exceed estimates. 
The major uh, area of concern I have on the departmental revenue uh, side would be EMS receipts. Uh, if you remember uh, from last year, we fell short in, those, in that category, uh, and, and the uh, cause of that was that the, the collection agency had been behind by about two months of receipts. So in this year's budget, we said, well, they're going to catch up. We will estimate $11.6 million, which would comprise a full year's uh, uh, cost of uh, a full year's revenues collections plus two months of the catching up. Uh, in the first quarter, I did not see an indication that they were catching up. And so, um, which is a cause of concern. Uh, and I've got a report from the Department of Public Safety basically saying that they have been in contact with them. They do expect to catch up by the end of this calendar year. But this is something, given the size of the rev revenue estimates, that uh, we need to be uh, monitoring uh, to make sure that happens. Now, one positive uh, uh, note uh, that I've received since this first quarter report was completed was that if you remember also last year, I mentioned that there, there was an audit at the time about Medicaid payments on the EMS receipts, and there had been a withholding of uh, revenues uh, based on that. We have uh, public safety reports that they had actually gotten results of that audit. It was de minimis. I mean, it was something like in the area of $13,000, and I, they actually now owe us, owed us some money. And we, there was actually a deposit of about, about over $400,000 since uh, the first quarter. Uh, to, re to refund us uh, funds that had been withheld. So that was actually a positive development. But again, EMS receipts uh, in this category uh, remain the one area of concern that I have in departmental receipts. Overall, I would say that the, uh, it, it is a, it, the three major tax sources, it was encouraging result from the first quarter on the three major tax sources, although we do, ex again, expect some offset a little bit on the franchise tax receipts. And then uh, the, the, the one to watch here is on the departmental side would be EMS receipts for the fiscal year, for the balance of the fiscal year. On the expenditure side, um, most departments uh, have, have typically do a good job of staying within their uh, overall uh, appropriations after seasonal adjustments. Seasonal adjustments meaning parks department, street department, when they have per performance and seasonal people that come on and off, uh, we know that at the end of October or whatever, seasonal employees will drop off, so we make those adjustments. That's what I mean by seasonal adjustments. Um, however, we do have some particular departmental expenditure items of note. In the street division, if you remember this year's budget, we added about $800,000, or I, actually I believe a total of a million dollars for salt purchases. And that was for an estimate of $50 per ton on salt. Well, we've since been informed that salt costs have skyrocketed uh, simply because of the, the, the volume of usage of the last year. A matter of fact, it was, uh, it was exceeding $115 a ton, whereas our budget was based on $50 a ton. And not only that, it was difficult to identify sources. Um, so the uh, street department had, has identified a source and um, locked in a, locked in a uh, cost of $112 per ton, but that would result in purchasing salt but an estimated $1.2 million over budget. So that's something that we're going to have to struggle with to try to identify where we're going to scramble to make sure we have to buy the salt. Obviously, we have to buy the salt, so we're going to have to make, uh, identify where we can find those sources within the department and then elsewhere. And then on the public safety department, uh, the fire department is tracking higher by $1.1 million. This includes an estimated 400,000 related to fitness pay examinations that were not included in the budget. That was something that was a pay negotiated nation item. Um, and then our overtime spending, typically they've been over spending on overtime, then underspending in their 101. So that's offset a little bit. Uh, 2.1 million over in overtime, 1.0 million under in, uh, in uh, regular salaries. So there's still about 1.1 million over projected. On the other hand, corrections, uh, their census has been averaging 113.77, or just under uh, 1,400 uh, detainees at their facilities when we had a budget of 1855. So we're, we will see probably some underspending in that category, particularly with the meals account, which is based on a headcount. And so you see some underspending there, which would be useful because we're overspending on the fire department side. On the police department, year-to-day expenditures for police include some notable pressures on the budget. Um, this includes some fitness exam payments similar to the fire department that were a result of the pay negotiations, and those would be in excess of a million dollars. 
And then overtime costs, which they've had uh, significant costs. Through the seven pays when this first quarter report was done, they had spent $1.9 million out of their $4.2 million budget. Um, now, in, historically speaking, uh, the police department has been good in saying, okay, when we have a spending area, then we, we stay within our total appropriation. We won't spend here, and, and they make it. Um, although this level of spending is going to be a, is going to be a tough to do that. Uh, we'll work with them in any way we can and make sure that we try to reduce discretionary spending. And, and do that, but the, uh, just on a trajectory level, if that level continues, that may become an issue from a budget standpoint. And so that's something obviously we're gonna have to keep an eye on. And then finally, the other area of concern there is workers' comp. We did uh, budget workers' comp, if you recall, we were targeting some savings of about 15% reduction in, in total uh, savings as a effort to try to get a control of that. We also distributed the workers' comp costs among some of the major departments so they would see it in front of them so they could work. Uh, work uh, so it wouldn't be something that was in a citywide account that nobody saw, but it would be in their budget where they could uh, actually see that they needed to work on it. That is still tracking high. It's about the same as previous years, so that is, that's going to be another challenge just to make sure that uh, we don't overspend our workers' comp costs. And I, and I think that would be another problem area in terms of the spending. Um, of course, uh, we'll be working with all the departments to do whatever we need to do to try to keep it within the total appropriation. And that's sort of a summary of uh, where we stand. Obviously, it's it's early part of the fiscal year, but uh, it's good to identify these things in advance so that you know how to, uh, to um, adjust where necessary. Okay. Questions from members of the committee? Alderman Varinger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Paul. Um, one thing I want to ask you is that when, when we look, when we're reading this, um, are you contacted by these different departments to say, here's what's going on with our budget that we have projected that we're going to go over and then do you all discuss how that might continue to impact the budget in most cases it's it's a matter of us if watching and because we do payroll projections every pay period and looking at the projections and identifying areas that we're having troubles now i can say in particular large ones such as the salt issue that was one that came uh, todd was out there up front saying hey i'm having issues with the salt account and uh here's i mean this is what the situation looked like. it was such a large amount that uh he was he was pretty quick on that one in other areas it's just a matter of us in the budget division tracking payroll projections and things like that uh, to look at and, and as well as non-payroll projections if we see that spending on a on, on a spending year-to-date spending is historically uh, if there's any anomalies there and if there are then we'll follow up with the department and call them up and say hey what's what's going on here um, but of course 75 percent or more of our expenditures are payroll so that's usually the first place to look when you see an issue uh, in terms of spending um, okay only because um, the police department had said at this point they think they're already at 1.1 million dollars on the cost of you know, trying to help out with what's going on in the, in the region, mm -hmm. and is that in here? Uh, through the first quarter, it is. Now there have been two pays, I believe, since then, um, and so that would—that's what's going to be pushing this uh, in terms of overtime spending uh, uh, further. Uh, and and I, I think typically we'll, we'll work with them however we need to work with them to try to if they need to uh, if they're underspending on their 101 and they're overspending their overtime transfer or what, whatever we need to do or, or cutting back in discretionary expenditures the concern i have is that there's only so much you can do within that total amount now typically in previous years they would not overspend their budget and that was good i mean i'd always rely on that fact however given these unusual circumstances i i, I think we need to be uh, uh, diligent in, in, in identifying the fact that at, at one point, at some point in time, it's going to be a, we can't, they can't make it within that appropriation. What do we do? And, and I, I think that's why we identified these things in the first quarter to try to identify what we do from there. Okay. Um, the other question I have is that you had mentioned the red light cameras. Yes. And the money is sitting in escrow. Are the cameras? I mean, and you may or may not know this. Are the cameras still actually working? Yes, to my knowledge. Okay. Um, and 
Medicaid. And I know you, you brought this up about, we were concerned about you know, getting reimbursed. But what about the fact that we didn't get the Medicaid expansion in the state of Missouri? And have we projected how that's going to impact us there? I have, that has not come up uh, as an issue on the EMS side. Uh, okay. this, this is, uh, the, the, the Medicaid, uh, the, the reimbursement I was talking about was mostly just for EMS runs. Right. There was a question about it. Uh, they were doing audits and all, and, and last fiscal year what they did was they, they thought there were some things questionable and they withheld payment. Well, uh, aside from that not being the correct process, uh, we, we needed to go, they needed to actually go through the audit and then come up with a conclusion. Well, we've actually done that now, and the, and the conclusion was that there was de minimis uh, uh, need for uh, holding, and everything was pretty much done according to Hoyle, and we, I think it was the difference of about $13,000 as opposed to the $400,000 they had started with holding. And so since that time, they have reimbursed the city that amount, but that was all related to EMS, not general uh, Medicaid. Correct, which is what my concern is, is that if the percentage of what they're willing to cover on huh? an EMS call, if that's going to go down. That I, I, I don't know. I okay. mean, I, I, I'm not as familiar with how that would impact, uh, particularly with EMS. OK. Um, and then the, the very last uh, thing I, I have is just has to do from the chair. Mm -hmm. is that since we're going over this report into six months, at any time are we going to have any of the departments that there's concerns come yes. back and speak to us? If, if we've identified some, I'd be happy to call them in. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, That's something it. that we talked about some time ago. So a after this discussion, if we feel the need to, I'd be happy to bring to right. invite them in. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's all I have. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Williamson. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Thanks, Pa. I think you do an excellent job, pretty in-depth on your uh, budget report, as usual, as normally. Thank you. Um, police Department is my question. And in dealing with their budget and, of course, the uh, situation we had out in Ferguson, of course, and along with the city marshals being included into their budget. And I know we do have an access forfeiture fund that the police have kind of a discretionary use for whatever. Would that fund come into play? Because looking at the police department, kind of what you're saying, just a summary that you have, uh, will they be over budget because of the situation in Ferguson and kind of overspending? Uh, that's actually, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure what, how much flexibility they have with, with that. Um, whether there could be the possibility they could use these those funds for buying something that might be a drain on their regular operating budget mm -hmm. uh, that would be something I, I I would definitely might be worth pursuing I, I, I when they testified in, when we did the budget originally I, I believe they did have plans you know as for each one of those items that were in the because there is a budget for the asset forfeiture whether or not all that was set in stone and whether there's some flexibility there so that it could relieve some something from the operating budget uh, I'd have to discuss that with the police department itself okay so in dealing with the forfeiture fund um, in the police department is there anything in writing I guess we can have as his chief that so they kind of explain to us exactly what they can use those funds for you know what I'm saying? What they can't do with them, right. what they can do with them. Right. There is a there is a there is a, a policy manual criteria. I think they have. Yeah, right. the criteria that says how how they have to spend those funds or what's allowed and what's not allowed and those type of things. So. Okay. All right. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay, sure. <laughs> Alderman French. Yeah, Paul. Uh, on the same uh, line of question, my question is mostly about the police department as well. So first, when did when did this report end? What's the last? This is through the first course. So this would be September 30th. Okay, through September. All right. Um, and so, I had sent a, a letter to the chief and asked him to kind of estimate how much they had spent in related relation to the protest and, and going out in Ferguson. And the number he sent over was uh, approaching around 1.4, 1.5 million dollars they've spent and. Um, salaries, overtime, and equipment purchases, emergency equipment purchases. 
Um, so only a portion of that, if any, would be included in, in this part right here, right? That, that would be right, yeah. Um, and so what happens when uh, the police department comes back, I don't know, three, four million dollars over budget? Um, how do we find that money? Well, I, I, the only example I could uh, compare it to is when the fire department overspends, typically, now this is smaller. Every year, doesn't yeah, <laughs> and, and I was actually looking at that uh, from last fiscal year, and they overspent by about, I, I think, something like $700,000. But the old department was over only by about 200000 because there were other, for instance, corrections looks like it's going down, and, 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 and there were some others that were underspent. So we, we, within the department first, you try to identify any underspending to mitigate whatever that issue is. Now, let's say it becomes something to that, to that magnitude. Well, that's, that's, that's a big uh, nut to crack. Um, I, I think you would put anything on the table you can find, first within the department. Uh, as Alderman, Alderman uh, Williams has said, maybe there's something, there's some, something you can do, uh, there's some relief on the asset forfeiture side. I, I, again, that's speculative, but that would be something you'd look at. You look at anything else within, then you'd start looking at other departments, say, hey, is there any underspending now anywhere else? And failing that, failing all that, then you'd have to say, well, is there anything in the revenue side that we can supplemental appropriate to make sure that we don't, uh, so to address? And again, it's still early, though, from the revenue side, and I wouldn't want to uh, go that direction. And I, I can't, uh, the margin there is not such that, uh, I mean, it's too early in the fiscal year to define whether or not you have sufficient revenues to do that. So uh, I, I think, it is something to what, where you, we, given the, this time of the fiscal year, we have to identify uh, what the potential range of spending would be. And then if that happens, we can't overspend the appropriations, so they'd have to be a supplemental at one point or another. Uh, I would hope it wouldn't come to the fact that we'd end up spending reserves, because that's not something we'd want to do. But, I, I guess it depends on the circumstances. How much of it's discretionary, how much of it's mandatory, how mu and that type of thing. I mean, that, it, it's, a, it's a question that we're going to have to look at as, as, the, as the fiscal year continues. So what, I, so what I'm hearing you say, and, and based upon how this thing has worked in the past, is that when uh, a department goes over, uh, you guys kind of try to find the money somewhere else and move it around. That moving around, though, usually happens at, um, at ENA. Uh, and we're not necessarily included in that? Well, sometimes it happens at, like, for instance, sometimes it happens at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so, uh, and the, con the controller has uh, certain emergency powers which you can say, look, these are the bills we you have to pay and you, you pay those and certain expenditures were not spent over here, well then we can use that appropriation authority and apply it to these expenditures here. And that's, that's uh, it happens every fiscal year, I, I believe. Uh, and, and to some degree, smaller, dollar amounts, other larger dollar amounts. But from a, uh, there are transfers, as, as I mentioned, um, and you do have a copy of those that are approved through the first or uh, proposed through the first quarter uh, to address certain things. And that happens with every department. And it could be, uh, we thought, and it could be as small as $5,000 in office supplies going into computer supplies and stuff like that. Larger amounts, like for instance with the police department, you'll typically see something like, Oh, uh, we budgeted this amount in workers' comp. We don't expect to need that, but we do need it in overtime, and so there's a couple hundred thousand dollars moving there. Uh, just as an example, um, those kind of things uh, we do uh, regularly throughout the fiscal year, and that's by approval of the ENA. So I guess, Mr. Chairman, I guess the point I'm just trying to raise is that, that uh, especially if we're, if we may reasonably expect. Uh, a, a large overspending mm -hmm. in the police department because of all the circumstances. What I would really want is uh, for the committee to be involved in uh, what gets cut and what gets moved around mm -hmm. to fill that hole. Okay. Um, okay. I know sometimes that, that gets done um, without us and, and then makes us wonder why we sit here and do a budget every year if the money just gets moved around mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think we need to keep a close eye on that police budget because that's going to. They're just going to spend more and more money over there, especially if things get bad in the next few weeks. Um, corrections, um, that, yeah, that's down pretty significantly. Um, the number of um, people in jail. Uh, 
Any idea why that happened? Or what, I, I do know that there were some, and I, and I can't say in terms of what the impact is, but I do know there was a concerted effort on the judge's uh, part in the last couple of years to sort of uh, speed up the process of adjudication of the cases. Now, whether that's still going on or whether that's had an impact in terms of uh, what that is, uh, what the uh, status, uh, in terms of the census going down, I, I don't know what the magnitude would be on that or whether it's just fewer cases, but. Um, well, I like less people in jail, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the last thing, the, the, you said I think $1.9 million is in the escrow account for the red light cameras? Yes, now that's a gross amount. If you, uh, if you recall, there, there's a split between the ATS and the city, and I, I believe the city's share of that would, if, once you break out the ATS, it would be about 1.3. Okay, and so um, I guess last month it was announced that there was going to be some settlement. Does that affect us? or? <laughs> I, I saw that myself, and I said, what, what, does, that, what does that do to us? And I said, uh, I, I was told by the city councilor's office, no, that does not affect us at all. Does not affect does us? Does not. Uh, so we're still in the same kind of state of limbo? Yes. It's, so has it gone up to the Supreme Court? It has not yet. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so at some point, we may have to give that money back. Yes, which is why it's an escrow. The, uh, the ideal situation would be that we prevail, it's released, we've got additional monies, plus We've got to put it in the budget going forward. That would be ideal, but we'll. Point of view, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it may answer one of your questions about coming up with monies for spending. So. Uh. All right. Thank you. Second, please. Alderman Vaccaro. I do have a couple questions. Are we still outsourcing the EMS billing? Yes. And from what I remember, it was actually worse than we were doing. Um, in FY well, um, let me let me think about this. FY thirteen, we actually did better. I mean, I think it was, I think it was like ten million dollars or, or, or so. But FY fourteen, we had this problem where they started falling behind, and that's continued into this fiscal year. So, I, I would be concerned about just ensuring that somehow they they we meet our budget estimates this year. Yeah, we, I would think bringing it back, I mean, we did better with it than the outsource, plus we have to give up part of the revenue to them. Uh, that's true. I, I, I would think if there's a continuing problem with that, that's something going to have to be evaluated. The other rumor running around here, and you could dispel it while we're here, people are stopping me in the hall saying that uh, we're going to furlough employees to offset the cost of the police stuff going on in Ferguson and around. No, no. I, I mean, at least I, I, that, that's the first I've heard of that. No, no. Well, I just will dispel it while we're here because I, that's what I said I had heard. Yeah, uh, no. I've uh, not heard that. So, and then the other question, I, they're not going to take our ward capital down lower again this year, which they seem to do without asking us. Oh, you're talking about the, the regular 75% appropriation and as opposed to the 100% appropriation of ward cap? Uh, I would like, again, this sort of, is, I sound like a broken record when I do this. I'd like to be able to say, because that we're going to do it 100%. I, I think positive results in the sales tax might help that. Um, but as you know, uh, if you look at sh how the, the budget is balanced, it is balanced, but it was structurally imbalanced, meaning we are using part of those funds. Uh, from sales tax, the half cent sales are part of the funds from the Affordable, using, Affordable Housing Commission, and that, that, that kind of thing. There was about $5.9 million in reallocated funds, plus some one-time revenues. We've got an underlying gap of about $10 million. If we can get to that point where we can have some cost drop off and additional revenues where, where we're structurally balanced, that we don't have to keep shifting monies around, then I would think we'd be at that point. Uh, and that, so the, uh, it's better than where we were three years ago, but it's not where we need to be. And I, I, it's a struggle. And, and I, it, having served on the capital committee, I know exactly what you're talking about in terms of the needs for capital. And I, I think you're not going to find a bigger advocate for capital here. But um, I, I would like to say yes, but I, I think we're going we're gonna, to, we'll just have to keep looking to see how revenues do and on the expenditure side where we're at there before we know. Uh, a little bit more about FY16. Um, I, I think the mid-year report might give us a little indication of that, 
as, as it becomes clearer. But yeah, I, I would like to see that return to full as well. Well, I just don't even see it taken down lower. Oh, they don't even ask us. They, they lower. You mean lower than the 75? Well, I've seen. I mean, where we started it and where we're, when I started, where we were at and where we're at now, it's gone down each year. Well, now there's also the fact that sales tax itself, if you look at it going back, uh, as, as I mentioned in the revenue report, it's not historically a strong growth tax. Going back about 10 years, the growth rate would be about between a half a percent and 1% a year. Now, since the end of the recession, we've seen a, a little bit better growth, three and a half, maybe four, uh, and, but it's been volatile. So sometimes you'll see, uh, and, and you'll, you'll see this when you have a beginning fund balance in your ward account and we appropriate that, that's because the previous year's receipts exceeded estimates. Um, this first quarter was a good result. Hopefully we've got a repeat of that. Uh, if that's the case, then uh, maybe you'll see it uh, go up. But again, it's the first quarter, and I don't want to uh, go beyond, uh, beyond that in terms of saying where we're going to end up. Okay, thanks, Paul. Any other questions from members of the committee? Oh, go ahead, Alderman Williams, and you're on the committee. You go first, and then. Yeah, just one. Um, providing uh, that we receive the money or the ruling with the Supreme Court and the, and the city of St. Louis receives the money for the red light camera. What is the uh, split on that? Uh, is it 60-40 between the city and the, and the company? Is it, what is the exact I split? think the exact, and I have the exact number. Um, I, it was, I believe it's 31 and change, $31 and change and 60, and with the, with the rest going to the city. So oh, it was like 68 so, and change. So we received a larger portion? Yeah, a slightly over four, a slightly over 60%. Okay, all right, that's all I have, thank you. All the women, did you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, quick question. If our current trends were to continue in terms of revenue and expenses, what are we looking at in terms of a budget, overall budget shortfall? Well, I, I, I think it's too early to say budget shortfall, but um, I would say the revenue trends are positive. Um, although I would say the EMS revenue, since it's such a large number, is a caveat to that because um, right. it was trailing and I've got 11.6 million in, in revenue estimates tied to that so if they don't catch up uh, it would be enough to negate the positive results of the other three uh, the three major taxes so I, I would say from a revenue standpoint that was a positive return most of our major the, the, and by major I mean I'm talking earnings payroll and sales tax mm -hmm. on the expenditure side I would say most departments are, uh, are, are uh, within appropriation, but that it is tight. However, we do have police, uh, which was tracking over as of the end of the first quarter, and uh, subsequently, I, I know that with overtime uh, expenditures continuing, that could be be a problem for total overall. Plus, we have that issue with the salt and the street department. So. Um, it's within, when, you, when you're looking at a 400 and some odd million dollar budget, when you're looking within the margin of being three or four million dollars, it, it's hard to tell in the first quarter. Right. Um, there have been previous quarters, and if, if you go back a few years, when, and maybe this, members of this committee will remember, I remember in FY10, when we went through the first quarter, the alarm bells were immediately sounding. I, I looked at it and I say, we've got problems. I mean, the revenues were falling short and by $10 million or at that point and, and it was going to get worse. Here you've, it, you're, you've got marginal issues. Uh, I think the potential for the police overspending is obviously there depending on what, how, how long that goes on in, in, in terms of overspending. And then, and then on the revenue side, I think it's slightly to the positive, but it's not so much that, hey, we're rolling in dough here. Uh, so. I, 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 it's, it's around the margins, and I, I, uh, I, I think, uh, which is why I go through these reports, and I think the, the, this tells you where the soft, soft spots are and where uh, potential sources are, but uh, we wait until the, 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 the mid-year report to give us a little bit more defining. Uh, and I, I recognize that it's difficult this early in the year to you know, see that, but I think for me what would be helpful um, in the future is, you know, looking at kind of where we are 
for what we projected versus where we actually are. So, um, you know, we have where we are year to date for fiscal year 15 in terms of earning tax. Um, I think for me, just being kind of new to this, knowing what we, where we projected to be right now, um, and then following that for the rest of the year so we can have a better overall um, understanding of how close we are to our actual budget versus how big of a gap above or below that we have. Okay, um, and I could do that, but I don't, uh, I typically don't project based on one, based on a quarter result. So I don't, right. when you do the budget, we don't say, hey, it's gonna be by this way. I mean, we could, we could look at saying, if the tr this trend were to continue, it would be X. Right, I think that's what um, I'm looking that for. That may, we, we, I, could, I could look at that, I could look at that. Now, I, I will point out on your expenditure reports, uh, that is strictly a straight line, uh, and, and again, the, that's one of the attachments. That's not your, that's this other attachment here. This is simply straight line projections of, uh, if you see that final column in the, in the right, it says percent of approved balance year to date. Mm -hmm. So that's how much of the, uh, uh, the balance uh, remains through the end of the first quarter. Now you would think at the end of the first quarter you'd have 75%, so you are close to it. And so you can see uh, where various budgets are at any given time in terms of the remaining balance. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, question. Sure. There, there is no um, requirement for ENA when they make transfers to um, review or come back to this committee when they make the transfers. In the past, though, where they reached a transfer that's nearly $250,000 or something like that, you have brought it back here for some kind of uh, ordinance agreement? Um, no. Yeah, no, there, there's a couple things. Yeah, we, there's a couple remember. things. Mm -hmm. um, we've, uh, transfers uh, are approved by, uh, there are non-ENA transfers, which are Right. Let's say you got a supply account and it goes from computer supplies to office supplies. That that's sort of a within the account category, and they're say moving five thousand to five thousand. That doesn't require ENA. That's within that same family, except right. personal services, which we say always requires uh, ENA. Um, transfers themselves are limited entire to their entirety to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So you're, you're not going to see a transfer for a million dollars or a transfer for. Uh, $300,000 simply because we wanted to say there's going to be a limit to that. Now occasionally you'll have multiple transfers of that amount, but, it, but what it does is it makes the department identify, sort of calls attention to it that it's a larger amount. Um, last year when we, when we assumed control of the police department, we brought in that ordinance which sort of moved uh, I, I believe the marshals at the time uh, over to the uh, police department and then there were some funds that were moved to other departments right. from the police from department, the police department, the legal and uh, human services. That was done simply because it was such a, those were such large amounts. And uh, the thinking was that this is a major change in the budget where you've got, uh, it was several million dollars moving from the police department to uh, facilities to uh, equipment services and all of that, including the moving uh, the people over or not. We we said uh, at the time this well this is a significant change in the budget. This needs to go through uh, through the board bill, and that's how we did that. Okay. But in most cases, you don't have something like that. I mean that that well, that's unusual. As so, you okay, you're saying the transfers are not more than $250,000. On and that's an on administrative case. procedure? That's not by ordinance? That, that's actually set in the ordinance, in the bu budget ordinance. In the budget ordinance? Yeah, and we limit it to $250,000. Okay. So if it, so then they cannot go beyond that, or they, they can? They cannot. Go, they cannot. Now they can that. submit uh, multiple or, uh, uh, transfers uh, to add up that. Right, right, but then, then, uh, then that means A, a multiple right. of uh, Usually that kind of, that kind of thing you'll see in an enterprise fund where it's some major item uh, uh, that, they, that they need to address, whether it's like airports maintenance or mm -hmm. the water division's payment of uh, the taxes or, or, or something like that. Okay. All right. That answers my question. Yeah. Thank you. 
Are there any other questions from members of the committee? If not, we, we thank you for that review. Sure. Mm -hmm. what, there was, was there a particular department that we wanted to bring in? At I this think point? streets department. Like to see streets. We had, well, what I'm curious about asking them is there are things other than salt that you can use mm -hmm. and whether that's been sufficiently investigated. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, I think and the police? police okay. <laughs> we'll call them in. Okay, then. Public. I mean, you know, police and fire. Police and fire. fire. Yeah, public safety. Okay. It's like the EMS. I mean, not EMS, but the, um, just the system in the workhouse, though. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, sandwich below the so they don't be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll make those arrangements and we'll, you know, schedule that meeting. Okay. If there's no other business, then that completes our meeting for the day. Okay. Our meeting's adjourned. Mm -hmm.